Hey everyone, I'm Paul and I want my RAV4 to look a little bit nicer, so today I'm replacing a few parts to freshen up the outside of the car. Here I have a new grill, some lights, and this big thing is the antenna. I'll start by replacing the front turn signal lenses. They're held in by one Phillips head screw and a tab on the other side. Turn the light bulb socket counterclockwise to remove it. You can still buy new Toyota turn signal lenses online at Toyota Parts Deal or from your local Toyota dealer. If you're buying online, be careful to make sure you have the right parts because sometimes you can't return them. Install the light socket into the new lens, then latch the outside edge in behind the bumper cover. Aligning the screw was a little tricky, so pay close attention when you install it. Here you can see the old lights are faded and look a lot less orange than the new ones. The right and left sides are mirror images of each other and have different part numbers. I threaded the screw all the way in before installing it into the bumper. I think it makes it slightly easier to find the hole. Let's make sure the turn signals work. They look nice. My rear side marker lamps are falling apart. Let's replace them as well. You can pull the light out of the bumper, but the connector is stuck. Open the back door and remove the two bolts holding the bumper cover. You'll find one Phillips head screw at the bottom of the plastic, two more in the wheel well, and a screw with a 10 mm hex head up top. Now the plastic piece can come off. The rear reflector is held on by one Phillips head screw. With the reflector off, you can pinch the connector tabs to release it from the bumper cover. I ordered two new side marker lamps from Toyota Parts Deal. These are original Toyota parts. They look the same, but there is a right and a left side. They include the lens, light bulb, and connectors just like the picture. Install the new light and tighten the two screws. The connector clips in behind the reflector. Install the reflector and tighten the one Phillips head screw that holds it in place. Plug in the connector and reinstall the bumper cover. You'll have to hold it up while you get the two bolts started. The bolts in the back are M6 by 1.0 and the rest are screws. Make sure the fender liner fits into the clip at the bottom and install the screw. The hex head fastener at the top is also a screw, not a bolt. These have a coarse thread that goes into plastic. Let's make sure the lights work. These marker lights come on with the park lights. They are not turn signals. Open the back door and you'll find two bolts hidden by the hinges. Remove the four screws holding the bumper cover. Now you can pull the right side bumper cover off the car. Unplug the connector and remove the side marker light. This one is also broken. Here's another look at the part numbers. Pause the video here or copy and paste the part numbers from the video description. Install the new light with the connector facing the back of the car. The writing along the bottom of the lens will also be right side up. Plug in the connector and clip it in. This one doesn't want to clip in. I'll add a hole here in the side and a zip tie. Now I can secure the connector so it doesn't rattle around. In case you're wondering, these flaps back here are air outlet vents for the interior of the car. If you block these, your windows will fog up when it's raining. Install the bumper cover and tighten the bolts by the hinges. You can use an electric driver to save time, but the final tightening should be done by hand. Reinstall the screws by the fender and make sure the fender liner fits into the clips correctly. Let's check the lights. And this one works too. My grill is cracked on the right side and it looks like the clips in the middle don't hold it. There are four plastic clips and they're all broken. Fortunately, the grill also has four metal nuts and bolts in the corners, so it hasn't fallen off my car yet. Three of the four nuts are just spinning and not coming off. They're very rusty. Okay, let's just finish breaking the grill off here. The bolts have a square end that snaps into the plastic. The plastic can't hold them as well as my vice grips can. Let's take care of this rust here. Moving on to the right side, both of these bolts just snapped in half when I tried to remove the nuts. The original Toyota grill is discontinued, so I bought this cheap aftermarket one on eBay. It looks the same. I hope it fits. 
I was able to order new nuts, bolts, retaining clips, and the Toyota grille ornament from Toyota. These are original Toyota parts. Let's compare these grills. You can't tell in the video, but the old grill is slightly glossy, and the new one has more of a matte black finish. It's close enough. The eBay grill came with the plastic clips already broken. That's nice. I'll pull these off and install the Toyota parts. The hood ornament comes with adhesive backing already installed. Let's wipe the grill with some alcohol and install it. There are two alignment pins that prevent you from putting it on upside down. Notice anything different about these grills? The aftermarket one doesn't have a support for the middle of the Toyota logo, and the stock one does. Install the new grill on the car. The four plastic clips in the middle will snap into place. Install the four nuts on the corners of the grill and tighten them by hand. Don't make them crazy tight, it's just holding plastic. The grill is done. Looks nice, feels solid, but look at that. You can see the metal support in there. I'm painting these parts black to hide them. Okay, that's better. Now the hood latch support isn't noticeable behind the Toyota logo. Alright, now let's check out the antenna. First, you must roll down your window. Then you reach out and grab the antenna. The 90s were so fun. It should be bigger than that, but it's cold in here. Two Phillips head bolts hold the antenna onto the roof here. You can only pull it out a few inches right now. Fun fact, the antenna plugs into the back of the radio, so we'll start here. Removing the dash panel on the earlier RAV4, 1996 and 1997, is pretty hard. Luckily, Toyota made a separate trim piece around the radio. The bolts can take a Phillips screwdriver or an 8mm socket. Pull the radio out, then unplug the antenna. The antenna cable goes up and to the left. It's clipped to the top of the dash support, which is a round 2-inch diameter pipe. The antenna goes through the A-pillar, however, removing the trim won't help you because it's inside of there. Remove the plastic trim under the steering wheel. Two screws hold the plastic, and three bolts hold the metal piece. The antenna cable sits above the dash support, then drops down behind it and goes down along the left side kick panel by the beige colored relay box. Let's get the kick panel out of the way and I'll pull the cable down from the dashboard. I had to force it a bit because there was a clip near the end of the cable that was getting caught on stuff. With the cable no longer tangled up in dashboard stuff, we can pull the antenna straight out of the car. You can still buy the original Toyota antenna from Toyota Parts Deal or your local dealer. The two-door RAV4 has a different part number that is discontinued, so I bought the four-door antenna. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. Insert the new antenna cable into the A-pillar and it will come out down here. Slide the antenna down into place while pulling on the cable so it doesn't get tangled up. When the antenna is almost all the way in, guide the white plastic end with your fingers so it doesn't get stuck. There it is. I installed new bolts up here. I routed the antenna cable straight up and skipped the brown clip. A little farther up, I used tape to hold it. The cable then goes around the back of the metal dash support. In this picture, the right side is going toward the front of the car. The cable will go above the support, parallel to it, going toward the radio. The left clip is about 4 inches from the left side of the car, and the right clip is directly above the ignition switch. The cable goes above the steering column. Here you can see the cable above the ignition switch. The right side goes to the radio. The cable is now in the radio compartment, so I can reassemble the interior panels. Three bolts hold the metal piece. Clip the plastic dash panel into place, and remember to install the two screws holding it in. Now I can plug the new antenna into the back of the radio. Let's reinstall all this stuff. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver or an 8mm socket on the radio screws. A couple more things, and the radio is ready to use. And while all those other suckers are still listening to static with their short antennas, I will be listening to crystal clear AM and FM radio. Does the antenna actually do anything? Let's find out. Due to copyright nonsense, I'm turning the volume to zero, but it's all crap music and commercials anyway. You're not missing anything. I'm using the auto tuning feature to scan for stations. The radio stops at any station that comes in clearly enough. Let's see how many I get with the antenna up. Spoiler alert, it's 44 radio stations. Let's try it with the antenna down. 
scanning for radio stations, and I get exactly half as many with the antenna down. So it does stuff. Fixing your antenna is worth it if you like to listen to the radio. Moving on, I've had a problem with my fuel door not opening. I pull the thing, it makes noise, but I can only open it if I'm pulling on it with my fingers too. This would not work on a four-door RAV4. The fuel door has a little spring that pops it open. Unclip it from the hinge, close the door at least halfway, then slide the plastic clip off. Apparently these fuel door springs break on every car, so they're cheap and easy to get on Amazon. With the fuel door halfway closed, slide the clip end into the door. Then snap the other end into the hinge. That's it! And now my fuel door works. I've had a weird rattling sound coming from my spare tire. Check it out. What is that? Let's play a game. You guess what it is right now, and I'll give you the answer in 30 seconds. It's not the spare tire mount on the door. And it's not coming from the wheel. But the lug nut washer makes that noise. So it's the lug nut. But why? I'm getting this noise because I have the wrong wheels. These are 2003 Nissan Altima wheels and they're designed to take acorn style lug nuts. These lug nuts are cylinders and they're supposed to go into the hole in the wheel. The tapered part does fit where the acorn should go, but the angle is wrong and it doesn't seat correctly. If you look at the back side, you can see the lug nut doesn't go through the wheel and it just stops at the tapered part. Because the lug nut doesn't go in, the washer never gets pressed against the wheel and it stays loose and rattles. I'm curious to see if this problem is only on the spare or if all the wheels are like that. The washers on the front wheel are also loose. It would appear I have the wrong lug nuts for my wheels. Other than the rattling washer thing, I've also noticed torquing the wheels onto the car is a little bit funny. When I get close to 80 foot-pounds with the torque wrench, it starts to feel mushy and wants to keep turning. And that's because the size of this taper is too small for the wheels. And instead of the normal acorn lug nut that seats correctly into the tapered part, this sort of digs in and these lug nuts don't apply the right amount of pressure to hold the wheels onto the car. Therefore, it's dangerous. When I bought this car used, it already had these 2003 Nissan Altima wheels. The bolt pattern is correct and so is the offset, but the lug nuts are different and it also has a different center bore diameter. So the diameter of this hole right here should be just a hair larger than the cylinder that sticks out of the hub. This allows the wheel to be centered on the hub. It's called hub centric. Because this hole is too big, my wheels are not hub centric. Instead, they are centered by the studs and the lug nuts, and it could be off by a millimeter or two, which could cause vibration at high speed. So I have three options. Option number one, do nothing. I've been doing that the last three years. It's worked okay, but it's not safe. Option number two, go buy some acorn style lug nuts that are compatible with these wheels and everything will be okay, but it won't be hub centric. Option number three, go buy some Toyota wheels. The first generation RAV4 had some nice brushed aluminum six spoke wheels. You could also get the three spoke painted silver wheels or I can get any other 16 inch Toyota wheels. What do you think I should do? Leave a comment below. And finally, I want to freshen up the wiper arms a bit. They're not broken and they work fine, but there's just a little bit of rust here. The difference between the front wiper arms is the left side is longer here and shorter there. The right side is shorter near the mounting nut and longer by the wiper blade. I have these fancy Bosch wiper blades. Open up the cover, then slide the wiper blade off the arm. My rear wiper arm is good too, just slightly rusty. I used a wire wheel to clean up the rust and sandpaper to rough up the old paint. Okay, so I spray painted the wiper arms and I did a horrible job. The paint was runny and uneven and my wipers ended up looking much worse than before. 
I'm going to put them back on the car for now, but as soon as I'm done with the video, the wiper arms are going to the sandblasting place, then I'll get them powder coated. Sandblasting is cheap. They'll charge me $20 to clean up all three wiper arms. I don't know how much powder coating will cost. You can buy all three wiper arms new from Toyota Parts Deal for $200 total. If powder coating costs more than that, I'll just buy new wiper arms instead. Let's make sure they stop in the right place. Good. You don't need to remove the spare tire to work on the rear wiper arm. I just did it so you can see it better and so I could spray paint the spare tire holder. Unlike the wipers, I did a good job painting this piece. I hate spray paint. I lack the patience to paint things properly, but also the stupid cans don't spray right when you still have half the paint left. Okay, I think we're done here. That's it for this video, and make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think about the wheel and lug nut situation. I'll be reading those comments and doing something about it in the very next video. Also, check this out. I have a strut tower brace here and a limited slip differential. So I'll be installing those soon. See you guys next time.